The following video was recorded on location in my state-of-the-art office in the corner of my first floor apartment. If you like what you're about to hear, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell in the upper right corner. Hello. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for taking the time to do this interview. Yeah, no problem. Well, awesome. Well, again, uh, thank you for taking the time to do this interview. I've been a tremendous fan of your playing, no matter what the project is, and it's an honor to be able to talk about the debut album from The Ferryman coming out next Friday through Frontiers. Cool, thank you. Great talking to you. Uh, so, how did this whole project come to be? Yeah, it's like it usually starts uh, with a phone call, call or an email from uh, Serafino at Frontiers Records and he always has these great ideas <laughs> about uh, projects and albums and artists and everything and uh, uh, I was just done with my second Freefall album and uh, he, he asked me if I wanted to do something else, something new and uh, he suggested Ronnie and I was just listening to him on some YouTube clip when he was singing some uh, Deep Purple cover and so I knew that uh, he was an extremely good singer so I, I said uh, yes right away so from the start it was only me and, uh, and Ronnie Oh, and, and yeah, I mean, what a combination you two are together. And then when you get Mike Tarana on, on drums as well, I mean, that's just an amazing lineup for a debut. Yeah, that was great. Uh, actually, we was I was thinking about the different drummers, and I asked Ronnie, who's your favorite drummer? If you could ch choose anyone in the world. And he said, uh, Mike Tarana. And I said, yeah, let's ask him and see if he can do it. And he could. And he, it was great because he, he really liked the music too. And so it worked out really good. Oh, that is so cool. So how did you know what direction you wanted to make the music to be this time around? Uh, yeah, for me, it's always about the singer. So I, I listen to Ronnie and his voice, and uh, uh, I know what he can sing and how it sounds and everything. And uh, when I write a, a song, I can hear his voice in my head. And uh, I know he can do, you know, the Dio stuff, and uh, also uh, like uh, Joel Lande and uh, the power metal stuff. So I wanted to go, you know, like a mix between newer power metal and also old school old school Dio stuff and that's what was my direction yeah and it, it's an amazing combination that you've thought of as well I mean being able to combine those I mean Ronnie's showing off his voice magnificently I mean your style of playing just flourishes throughout and of course uh, Mike with his drumming and uh, just showing off in all the right spots I mean it's just a great collection of genres that were just basically meant to be played together and you guys are just doing so amazingly well with this album thank you very much yeah i'm very glad it worked out uh, but I, when you have a good singer for me it's very easy it's a uh, i don't have to struggle with the songs uh, i just hear his voice and i know he can do this very easy i i always sing the demos and i i can't sing like ronnie uh, at all but i try to you know sing in his style as good as i can because he's recording his stuff in in uh, in spain and uh, so I, I try to make it easy for him was that much of a challenge for you at all uh, knowing that uh, he lives in spain and uh, you wouldn't be able to all record at the same time in the same studio i'm so used work like that now uh, I write some stuff here and uh, they write in their studios and we record in our own studios and uh, one thing that I always do is that I put a lot of work on the demos uh, the demo sounds almost like the, uh, the finished album and uh, to make it easier when as you are sitting in a different country in your own studio I don't think it's uh, it's it's a big risk if I'm just sitting in the kitchen and recording with my phone even if I have a great song I, I need to show them the whole production and I put a lot of time on programming drums for the drummers so they know what to do and also as I said with the, um, the vocals I try to sing in my studio and copy the singer as good as I can so they feel uh, you know home when they try to sing it 
So with that, uh, how much did things change once uh, he started adding his vocals to it? I mean, did the, the songs change at all, or were they set in stone when uh, all the parts started coming together? I wouldn't say change, but I, they um, grow to something much better. <laughs> and uh, it, yeah, but it, the, the, the basic idea you have is that I wrote the lyrics too, so uh, and he didn't change much of the melodies and stuff. It maybe he added some extra... You know harmonies and uh, but uh, it sounds like the original song, but much better, of course. Yeah, that's the amazing thing when uh, you are the main songwriter of a project. When you give the parts needed to the necessary musicians, they can take a good song and make it into a great song. And I imagine that's what Ronnie did with all of them. I mean, I of course haven't heard the demos, but having mm -hmm. Ronnie's voice on top of it, it just makes it sound so good. Yeah, he really did, and uh, he's actually he's used to my um, songwriting because he's a fan of the uh, Alan Lander albums that I did before. So uh, he knows my music, and uh, he want he wanted to do something in that direction. Uh, so I think it was pretty easy for him. He's extremely fast. I, I sent a couple of songs to him, and just you know, the day after, oh, I'm already done, and it sounds fantastic. So uh, I think he can sing an album, you know, just in a couple of days, and that's fantastic. Yeah, I was actually going to bring that up as well. I did hear a uh, little nuances here and there that uh, harken back to the Alan Lande days in the songwriting. And, uh, of course, obviously different enough for the Ferrymen uh, having uh, Mike and Ronnie add their specialties to the project. But it's it was cool having that kind of concept, like almost an all-star project, uh, once again being able to show everybody off in the perfect light. Yeah, it, it always, it's always a, a great feeling to write to great singers and uh, great musicians uh, I love to do it and, and uh, w when they are this you know good it's never a risk I don't have to worry about it w will he do something strange with the song or so he didn't have to sing anything uh, again or everything was perfect the first time and that's great and it, and it saves time <laughs> And uh, with the album coming out next Friday through Frontiers, uh, what is the reception that you've heard so far for the project? I haven't heard so much. I've seen a couple of reviews and they were really good. And I, of course, I've seen uh, um, on social media uh, where people are writing about the videos and stuff. And that, that has been really, really good. So it, it feels great. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that too, because... Once I saw the lineup, I, I, I usually don't try to get my hopes up so I can be that much more surprised by an album. When, when I seen this lineup and what you guys were going for, I just knew that this was going to be one of the best albums of this style of the year. And just from the first song alone, I was able to realize that you guys achieved that. And just throughout the entire album, I mean, all the peaks and valleys, all the dynamics, all the showcasing of all you guys. I mean, you just you guys just nailed it on every level. Wow, that's great to hear. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so, uh, w with that, is there uh, any plans of uh, maybe doing some one-off shows, being able to promote the project, or any touring of any kind? Uh, we talked about it, and everyone involved is uh, really want to do it. So we we will see after the release what happens, and uh, of course we have to get a, a bass player too. But I don't think that's a problem. So hopefully we will do something live too. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. I mean, I love the songs on record, but being able to experience those songs live is would be an even more tremendous feeling. Yeah, it would be great to do it live too. We we, we met when we. Uh, did the videos and uh, you know we really like each other so that that would be great uh, with that was there uh, any songs uh, left over from the first writing session or uh, anything that might come up in the future or are you guys uh, just taking your time with it no uh, you mean if there are any leftovers yeah from, yeah no no usually when I write I don't if I have an idea that's not good enough or it's I don't finish the song, I throw it away right away. So when I have, you know, 12 songs or what it is, I use them all. So I, I don't have a, you know, collection with old songs that I didn't use for uh, albums. I, I just use them all. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the amazing thing, is like, uh, y you are a part of so many great projects. H how are you able to find the time to be able to uh, write for each individual project? Yeah, 
it, it's can be hard sometimes, uh, uh, but uh, I really like to do it. You know, I, I've done it for so many years, and uh, I guess it was two years ago. I realized that I didn't have a break for maybe 15 years or something. I always have, you know, two albums that I always writing on, and. Um, uh, so I said, I will finish everything now and I will take a break. I, I don't want, I say no to all the new projects just to have a real, real break. And I did it and I, after two weeks I was, <laughs> it felt so strange. So I had to uh, start on a new album right away. So I guess it's something I have to do. Uh, even if I don't have the time, I take the time and I do it. Yeah, because which... I need it in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to say, when you have that inspiration and you just have that feeling that to create music, I mean, you should create as much music as you possibly can as long as those, uh, the creativity is still flowing. Yeah, when I was younger, I, I was worried if I write a lot of songs, I won't have any more uh, you know, ideas. But the more I write, the more ideas I get. So uh, that's the opposite. I, I get more and more stuff I want to do the more I write. Yeah, and that opens a lot of doors for different projects, too, just in case a particular style you want to write for doesn't fit for a particular band or whatever the case is. Yeah, but the hard thing is that I, I don't want to re repeat myself too much. I, w I want to, you know, do better <laughs> each album. So I, I noticed that the first song on an album always take, you know, a lot of time, and then the rest go quite fast. Just because I... I, I what do you say in English? I, I raise the bar on the first song, and uh, you know to make the sta stand out for the whole album. And uh, yeah, that, that can take a couple of weeks, and then I write really fast. And and with that, uh, uh, of course, uh, the album that we're talking about is the self-tell debut from the Ferryman coming out next Friday. Where did the band name come from? Yeah, it comes from the the song. There, there is a song called The Ferryman, so it's not the, exactly the same thing. And uh, yeah, I, I like the idea, and uh, a lot of the lyrics uh, from the album are about, um, you know, the story about the ferryman and, you know, death and everything. So I thought it was good for that. <laughs> and, and with that, I mean, uh, uh, like you just mentioned earlier, uh, for anyone that wasn't aware, you, you didn't just write the music for the project, but you also write the lyrics, too, uh, with your yeah. particular projects. Uh, was that a challenge for you at all this time around, uh, writing for Ronnie, writing for this project, or did it feel natural to write the lyrics? Yeah, it was actually easy this time. Sometimes it, it can be hard, and but it, it, it was really, yeah, it came fast, yeah. Yeah, and I really love the lyrical content on there, and again, just Ronnie shines with his melodies and harmonies vocally and it really makes those lyrics stand out as well and it's just it's a really cool saga that goes throughout yeah thank you very much oh yeah not a problem uh, so um with the album coming out next friday what's next for you uh right now i'm working on uh, uh the next primal fear album uh, I, I was just uh, on Skype with Matt Sinner and we always, you know, sitting on Skype and he's in Germany and I'm here in Sweden and we are writing together and uh, there are actually plans for uh, another Adam Land album too that I started on and uh, yeah, you are the first to know that <laughs> actually, <laughs> I just started on it. My job. And often, after that, I, 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 uh, but I guess that's maybe a, a year uh, in time. I, I will start on the next Freefall album, too. Uh, but, uh, I apologize. My jaw kind of just uh, hit the ground right now when I heard that you were writing a new Ellen Lande album. I'm, I'm just so excited about that. That was my uh, first experience being able to hear your songwriting and knowing that you're back in the fold with it. That just makes me so very excited. Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is uh, actually the first interview when I'm, uh, yeah, <laughs> talking about it. But uh, that, that's the plan and I started and uh, I know that uh, um, Frontiers, the record company, they really want us to do uh, something live too. So I, I think it finally will happen. You never know, but th that's the plan, that we will play live too with Isle of Landa. Oh, that, that would be phenomenal i mean even if it's just a one-off show or uh, just doing the festival circuit or whatever the case is uh, being able to showcase the songs that you have been a part of with alan lande i mean that would just be so incredible to be able to see those songs live yeah we have there's a lot of songs so we have a lot to choose from <laughs> it would be great <laughs> 
Yeah, and, and it's great that um you're also working on uh, the next uh, Free Fall album as well. I mean, I've been a huge fan of the first two albums so far. Uh, have you decided... Uh, um, I, I'm starting uh, with um, a list of singers, and um, but, but I will do that after uh, Alan Land and after the Primal Fear. So I haven't decided yet, but I have a list of singers that I haven't worked with yet, and uh, that will I will love to have on the next one. And I start with that, and then I write the songs that you know will suit them. And uh, so, uh, for example, if I would get. Michael Sweet, for example, <laughs> I would try to write something that would be great for him, you know. So I, I, I don't write any songs and then get the singers. I do it, do it the opposite way. Yeah, and that's a really good approach. I mean, with, with the first two albums, I mean, you really hear that you write for each singer that is gracious enough to be a part of the project. And I expect no less of, from that from the third album as well. I mean, just being able to write the right music for the right singers. I mean, I'm really looking forward to that as well. Yeah, it, it's a lot of work. It's more work than anything I, else I did. So after the first Free Fall album, I, I said I will never do this again because it's too much and I, I, I can't do it because, you know, all the guest singers and we have a deadline and I, you know, sending files all over the world and uh, and uh, well, then I did the second one and after the second one I, I said the same thing, never again, it's too much work, but already now I'm starting to plan the third one, so yeah, I, I, forget, I forget about the, uh, you know, the hard work after a while. <laughs> Oh, awesome. Well, of course, um, you also mentioned, uh, first of all, as well, uh, might, might be a good um, way to end the interview as well, uh, talking about your work with Primal Fear and the, the next Primal Fear album. Uh, can you talk about yet about uh, the direction of the album yet? Uh, yeah, I can say that we are very happy with the last uh, albums we did, and we want to continue in the same direction. But of course we want to do it even better if we can. That, that's the goal. But I don't think there will be any big changes. We, we really like this, the style and we have a good vibe in the band now, so yeah, and I'm glad we will continue. I'm glad to see that too, because it, especially with a band with the legendary status as, prim, as Primal Fear, I mean, when you do have members that leave for one reason or another, it always kind of rocks the foundation of the band. But I'm glad to see that you guys are going this strong because the last album was so great. I just, I love that style of melody and, uh, you know, the right amounts of power metal and hard rock mixed together. And, you know, just with that foundation like fully intact now, uh, doing a great North American run last year with Luca Torelli's Rhapsody. I mean, it's great to see that you guys are at this good level, and I can't wait for that next Primal Fear album. Yeah, we have a, maybe a different situation because I'm not touring uh, at the moment. Uh, I haven't toured for two years now, and uh, but uh, they have two great guitar players live, Alex and, and Tom. But I play a lot of guitars on the album, and I write a lot on, on the album, and uh, I will do some festivals. I will do Sweden Rock now in a couple of weeks with Primal Fear, but I don't tour so much, uh, and uh, yeah, focus more on the songwriting. That, that's why I have time to do some projects too, but because I'm not so much on, on the road, and uh, that's because I have you know, kids, and I can't be away that long. They, they are touring a lot now, so it's too much. Yeah, I, I was going to bring that up as well, because... Um, I, I know you focus, uh, of course, for obviously great reasons uh, with uh, family uh, not being on the road so much and uh, having other guitarists uh, filling in for your work. Uh, does it take much effort for you to uh, show them how to play the songs or are they able to adapt naturally or how does that all work about? They are really good guitar players, so it's not a problem. They just do it. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that at all. And, uh, you know, they, we have a... Um, they just listen to the stuff that from the album and they do it great and so it's never been a problem it's more of a problem for me now because I, I don't play the song so much so now uh, because I'm going to play on Sweden Rock I have to learn my own stuff again and so I, that, that was actually what I was practicing before uh, we were talking here <laughs> <laughs> I don't know my own solos <laughs> You know, and speaking of that, since you're working on it right now, what are the hardest songs that you wrote that are uh, a part of Primal Fear? I mean, like any songs or solos that are particularly hard for you to remember and play? No, it's not. It's not. I think it's 
mostly because I write a lot of stuff, it's hard to remember it all, what I did. So I have to go back and check. And, uh, uh, and especially if there is a lot of harmonies, it can be, sometimes it can be tricky to hear everything. So I have to go back, back and really listen to it again. But it's not a problem. I, I, you know, I made it. So I, <laughs> I should be able to play it. Well, it, it, it's good that it wasn't on a fluke, just one take, and you weren't able to do it again. It's good that good to know that you can play those riffs and solos and leads and everything the way that you that you need to, especially considering that you recorded it. Yeah, and actually, I play. I don't know if you uh, know about it. You, you have a NAMM show in, in uh, USA. We have uh, the Frankfurt Music Fair, and uh, I played there uh, there uh, in April, and I did some Primal Fear songs. Uh, uh, on the fair, so I have them. I know <laughs> some of them at least. <laughs> oh, that's that's fantastic. I mean, it's 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 great to see that you're still showing off uh, the Primal Fear songs, even if you're not with Primal Fear live. I mean, uh, getting the getting to do that and showing off your skills uh, with Primal Fear and uh, solo and all the other projects. I mean, it's cool that you are able to do these one-off appearances and showcase everything live. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, I love the band and I love the music, so I, I uh, yeah, it's cool to do it. Oh, very cool. Well, again, uh, Magnus, thank you so very much for taking the time to talk to me about everything that you got going on, and uh, most specifically the brand new debut project from The Ferryman, which is coming out next Friday through Frontiers Music. Uh, having had the opportunity to digest this album for the last couple weeks, I am absolutely enthralled with what you guys are doing, and I think once the album comes out, it's going to be highly regarded as one of the best albums of the genre in 2017, and you guys absolutely deserve that. Thank you very much. Very cool to hear. Uh, before we wrap things up, is there anything else that you'd like to mention that I haven't brought up yet? Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> Asked a lot of great questions, so you got it all.